coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. FAA approval allows BB Lost drone flights in North Dakota. FAA closes SpaceX Starship mishap investigation. And U.S. Navy hosts student drone camp. And I'm your host, Colin Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. FAA approval allows BB Lost drone flights in North Dakota. The FAA has granted UAVionics approval to conduct BB Lost drone flights utilizing Vantis, North Dakota's first of its kind UAS system. UAVionics, with support from the Northern Plains UAS test site, demonstrated to FAA personnel that it had established adequate risk mitigations to satisfy requisite safety standards for the specified BB loss operation within the national airspace. The precedent-setting approval speaks to the FAA's determination that the Vanta system meets applicable requirements of industry consensus standards or an alternative set of requirements ensuring safe integration of routine BB loss UAS operations in the NAS. The described approval provides for repeatability, an exemption which is technically rulemaking that may be referenced for future approvals in a much faster manner. More importantly, the approval exceeds the province of the original applicant working for the whole industry. By dint of the exemption approval, the dawn of safe BV loss operations, especially in North Dakota where the infrastructure can be leveraged for repeatable operations, has been appreciably hastened. Vantis is North Dakota's statewide UAS BV loss network, the first of its kind in the U.S. Created in 2019, Vantis provides turnkey support to commercial and public UAS operators through infrastructure and regulatory approvals, allowing applications and usability over a variety of industries. And after the break, MatterNet partner UPSFF granted BV loss authorization. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Matternet partner UPSFF granted BV loss authorization. Matternet has disclosed that its partner organization, UPS Flight Forward, was granted FAA approval to undertake BV loss operations with the former Matternet M2 drone. UPSFF, by dint of the aforementioned approval, is authorized henceforth to operate the Matternet M2 drone in the absence of costly visual observers retained to monitor subject drones' flight environments. UPSFF will replace visual observers with a ground-based radar system calibrated to scan for potential air traffic conflicts and report such to remotely located pilots of UPSFF Matternet M2 drones. WISC brings air taxi to D.C. WISC Aero is making a showing at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Global Aerospace Summit in Washington, D.C. this week. The firm, currently working on certification for its sixth-generation vehicle, is hoping to enlighten industry leaders and regulatory personnel on the, quote, importance of autonomy and realizing the full potential and benefits of this new form of transportation, end quote. Brian Yutko, WISC CEO, said, quote, We're thrilled to showcase our autonomous technology by bringing our sixth-generation air taxi to the heart of D.C., end quote. General Atomics poised to deliver on DARPA contract. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems is preparing to commence the flight testing phase of the DARPA Longshot program. Undertaken in 2021, Longshot seeks to develop and demonstrate an air-launched unmanned aerial vehicle capable of carrying and employing air-to-air -air weapons. In June 2023, DARPA awarded a Phase 3 contract to General Atomics for the manufacture and 2025 flight demonstration of an air-launched, flying, and potentially recoverable missile carrier. 
If successful, the concept stands to significantly increase the engagement range and mission effectiveness of extant fourth-generation fighter aircraft and air-to-air -air missiles. Volatis Infrastructure signs MOU with LEO Flight. Volatis Infrastructure has signed an MOU with LEO Flight by which the two concerns will collaborate to provide manufacturing support for LEO's wireless Vertistop charging technology. Volatis will also supply the Indiana-based electric vertical takeoff and landing manufacturer with Vertiport infrastructure. Volatis Infrastructure co-founder Grant Fisk set forth, quote, the Volatis team is honored to fulfill LEO's eVTOL infrastructure needs and excited to partner on their Vertistop charging technology to help bring an even more complete charging solution to the industry." End quote. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. FAA closes SpaceX Starship mishap investigation. The FAA has issued a brief statement in which they state that they have closed the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy mishap investigation. The final report cites multiple root causes of the April 20, 2023 mishap and 63 corrective actions SpaceX must take to prevent mishap reoccurrence. Corrective actions include redesigns of vehicle hardware to prevent leaks and fires, redesign of the launch pad to increase its robustness, incorporation of additional reviews in the design process, additional analysis and testing of safety-critical systems and components including the autonomous flight safety system, and the application of additional change control practices. The closure of the mishap investigation does not signal an immediate resumption of Starship launches at Boca Chica. SpaceX must implement all corrective actions that impact public safety and apply for and receive a license modification from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental, and other applicable regulatory requirements prior to the next Starship launch. And after these messages, U.S. Navy hosts student drone camp. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. U.S. Navy hosts student drone camp. The United States Navy's Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division Lakehurst partnered with New Jersey's Toms River School District to host a drone camp at which students were instructed in the basics of UAV design, purpose, and operation. The camp's Drone Legend STEM Fundamentals course helped participating 5th through 8th grade students learn to fly drones, the purposes to which such machines are put in the real world, and the correlation of mathematics and science to UAV design, construction, testing, and fielding. Students learned also about the UAV video recording and the editing of content captured by in-flight drones. Education Outreach Coordinator Haiti Oliveira described the camp as an enjoyable and effective means by which to introduce drones to students interested in learning about and flying them. Moreover, the camp afforded those students previously exposed to drone flying opportunity to advance their skills. In light of the inaugural camp's success, Oliveira expressed hopes that the program would be continued and expanded to include drone racing for high school students and a beginner's program for young elementary school students. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.